Hi all, welcome to Unit 9 General Angles with Radian Measurements this week. So last week all we did was talk about degrees. This week we're going to talk about radian measurements. We did work on converting between degrees and radians, and like I said, it's kind of like feet and meters, just different ways of units of measurement. So just a reminder that this Thursday, um, if you would like to take, it shouldn't say Unit 9 there, it should say Unit 7, so let's change that. So if you want to take the Unit 7 um, retake, that is going to be this Thursday. Make sure you sign up on the Google form. I will send you information, and that retake will be from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. So how can you find a measure of angles in radians? So what we're going to do today is graphing radian measurement in standard position and finding the co-terminal angles. Okay? So graphing in radian measurement and finding the co-terminal angles. So let's get started. So just to kind of remind you, how do you convert from radians to degrees? It's right here. Okay. So from degrees, you would do pi over 180 to get to radians, and from radians, 180 over pi. Like I said last week, if the answer is in radians, and I'm asking you to solve something, I want the answer in radians. And if the uh, problem's in degrees, then I want the answers in degrees, unless I say something differently. So make sure you're consistent with that. So let's first talk about what is a radian. So, a radian measurement is talking about the unit circle, and that's something we're going to focus on next week. So, as far as the only way you have measured angles so far is degrees, but there's an also a way you can measure radian measurement, okay? It is a way to measure an angle by the length of its arc. So, radian measurement has to do with the angle of the length of its arc. In theory, you can measure the angle with a tape measure, centimeters or inches. So you can also do that, but we can also use radian measurement. So the biggest part that we need to focus on today right here is that we know that going around a circle is 360. So when we go all the way around the circle, it's 360 degrees. 360 is the same thing as 2 pi r, okay? And we're really just going to focus so much on 360 is the same thing as 2 pi. So we're going to focus that 360 is the same thing as 2 pi. On the unit circle that we talk about a little more next week, radius is always one. Okay, so the radius of a triangle or a circle or whatever is always one on the unit circle. Okay, so let's kind of get started. So if I have this right here, my radius here is one. So before I know that this was zero degrees, right, and also 360 degrees. And this was 90 degrees, and this was 180 degrees, and this was 270. Well, now we know that 360 is the same thing as 2 pi. So I'm going to write that down. So I have this is 0 pi and 2 pi. Okay, well, let's think about it. This is halfway around the circle. So this is halfway to 2. So what's halfway to 2? Well, that's 1. So 180 is the same thing as 1 pi. 90 is halfway to 1. So what's halfway to 1? Well, that's going to be 1 half pi, or pi over 2. And then this is 1, and then we go 3 fourths of the way. So what's 3 fourths of 2? Well, 3 fourths of 2 is 3 pi over 2. So when you're talking about radian measurement, you could also change it from degrees to radians, or you take the whole circle and split it up into sections. I have zero, half of the way up the top, one full way, okay? So I go halfway, and then I go full, and then one and a half, and two. So half, one, one and a half, two. I think that's the easiest way to kind of separate up radians until we get more into the unit circle. But this is really, really, really important to make sure you're writing down and kind of seeing how I broke that up. Make sure you're asking questions if you have them. So we're going to quickly go over a few things about changing radian measurements to degree measurements. So if I look at this like we just did. I know that this is 0 pi. Let me zoom out a little. This is 0 pi. I know this is pi over 2. I know this is 1 pi. I know this is 3 pi over 2. And I know that this is 2 pi. Okay? So let's figure out these other measurements. So 
if I'm looking at 45 degrees, well, that's halfway between half and zero. Well, what's halfway between a half and zero? Well, one-fourth. So 45 degrees is the same as one-fourth pi. 135 is halfway between 90 and 180. What's halfway between a half and one? Well, that's three-fourths pi. So the pi is just kind of coming along for the uh, ride, but the fraction is what you're worried about. Okay, let's keep going. So I have one and one and a half. Well, what's halfway between one and one and a half? Well, that's five pi over four. Okay. Then what's halfway between three pi over two and two pi over four? Well, that's going to be seven pi over four. So like I said, I could convert those degrees to radians by multiplying by pi over 180, but filling out the circle like this and just kind of breaking it down into separating up the circle in sections, I think is really, 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 really beneficial, and it's going to help you so much more on the unit circle, okay? So much more on the unit circle, okay? So what we could do is do one like this as well. This next part, I would suggest kind of looking over this part right here and seeing if you can kind of convert it. What I like to do when I'm doing this is I like to separate up into twelfths. So when I'm doing this, I like to separate my circle up into twelfths. So everything is 15 degrees. So 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, okay? So I like to separate everything up, and so this would be like 1 pi over 12. This would be 2 pi over 12. This would be 3 pi over 12. This would be 4 pi over 12. 5 pi over 12. 6 pi over 12, which is 1 half. 7 pi. 8 pi over 12. 9 pi over 12. 10. 11. 12 pi over 12, which is 1. So whenever I'm looking at things, I like to take the unit circle and divide it up into twelfths. So 24 total, and then go from there. That just shows me, it helps me a lot to understand more of what's going on. Um, and I don't get as confused, and I don't have to memorize. Again, that's going to come and help next week for sure. Okay? So let's continue on, and let's start graphing with standard position, because we kind of have an idea of what, we know what standard position is. So we kind of have an idea of what a circle looks like. So I'm talking about radian measurement. Oh, I'm going to draw a straight line. So I'm going to label my pi over 2, which is the same thing as 1 half pi, FYI, and then my 1 pi, and then my 2 pi, oh, sorry, not 2 pi, 3 halves pi, 3 pi over 2, and then my 2 pi, and then my 0 pi. Okay? So they're saying, okay, let's look down here at the bottom, and they're saying, draw, let's do number, we'll do this one first, 7 pi over 4. So they want to know what 7 pi over 4 is. So what I like to do is I like to take 7 pi over 4, and I like to get the decimal there. So I like to do 7 divided by 4, and I get 1.75. So they're saying, okay, go up here to the circle, or to my graph, and say 1.75 around. So I know I have my terminal side and my initial side. My initial side still on my x-axis. Here's 0, half, 1, 1 and a half, and 2. Well, I need to go 1.75. So I need to go to 1, continue past 1 half, and then about a quarter of the way through. So that would be 7 pi over 4. Because, again, all the way around is 2 pi. So that's how you handle radians. Just kind of break it up. I like to look at the fraction only and then go from there. Okay? So let's do another one. Let's do number 4. So I'm going to draw my graph. And, again, especially in radian measurement, I would really, really encourage you in the beginning to write out the pi, the 2 pi, the 2 pi r, all that type of stuff um, just to make sure you're good to go. So let's think. I'm going to do a color different than purple. Let's do orange. So I have my initial side, and I need to go a one around, and then a third of the way more. 
So about right there. So that would be 4 pi over 3. Okay. We'll do one more of these. Let's do number 3 because number 3 is 35 pi over 2. So 35 pi over 2. So I have my coordinate plane. And again, I can label my sides. But 35 pi, well that's more than 2 around. So I'm doing 35 pi over 12. I believe it was, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, if I think about it, one full around is 24. So I know that I go all the way around once, and that's 24, and I have 11 more to go. Well, 11 pi over 2 is really close to 1 pi. So I'm going to go close, draw my side, and I'm done. So that would be 35 pi over 12. So hopefully that helped to draw things in standard position. Again, just remembering 0 pi, half pi, 1 pi, 1 and a half pi, 2 pi, and just kind of looking at the fraction, ignoring the pi, and where would this exactly go in the scheme of things. The last thing we're going to talk about today is coterminal angles. So the last thing we're going to talk about today is coterminal angles. Well, before we were talking about coterminal angles, all the way around, was 360 degrees. And we would add it and subtract it to get coterminal angles. Well, 360 is the same thing as 2 pi. So I'm going to add it and subtract it. Keep in mind, though, you have it's a fraction, so you have to get common denominators. So we're going to do number 1 there, 5 pi over 12. So I have 5 pi over 12, and I want to find a positive and a negative coterminal angle. So I'm going to add 2 pi, and I'm going to subtract 2 pi. The biggest error I'm going to see here is that people are going to just say, okay, 7 pi over 12 and negative 3 pi over 12, so eventually negative 1 pi over 12. Absolutely incorrect. I have to get common denominators. So when I add 2 pi, it's kind of like 24 pi over 12, because 24 over 12 is the same thing as 2. And then when I subtract 2 pi, that's the same thing as subtracting 24 pi over 2, or 12, okay? So I end up with, on my answer, a positive coterminal angle would be 29 pi over 12, and a negative coterminal angle would be negative 19 pi over 12. So again, the biggest error that I'm going to see is that people are not going to do this step right here, they're not going to get common denominators, and then they'll forget to do it here. So really, really remember that when you're doing coterminal angles, yes, you're adding 2 pi, but you have to get common denominators when you're adding fractions. Don't just add 2, subtract 2, okay? Uh, we're going to do one more of these, because I think you guys are pretty good with these. Uh, let's do number 2, just because it's negative, and sometimes that throws people off. So I get negative 5 pi over 4, so I'm going to add 2 pi. And I got negative 5 pi over 4, and I'm going to subtract 2 pi. Again, I have to get common denominators. So that's the same thing as negative 5 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4. Really all I'm doing is taking the denominator of the fraction, multiplying it by 2, and making that fraction. And then here I'm going to subtract 8 pi over 4, so 5 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. So my answer here on the top, my positive coterminal angle would be 3 pi over 4, and my negative coterminal angle would be negative 13 pi over 4. So hopefully that helps with standard position radian measurement and coterminal angles and understanding a little bit more about radians. Like I said, we're going to focus on radians all this week, and then next week we'll talk about the unit circle, combining degrees and radians into one circle. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Have a great day.